to give people real value um, as they may think about their home search or just things they need to think about as they're renting a place in terms of responsibilities and rules. Because um, definitely in our market in Ontario, there's a lot of misunderstandings and misconceptions about the rules and what can and can't be done. Um, so that sort of education can really be valuable for people. Well, friends, we're here again, Daniel with Katie. It's level up time. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. That was weird. I was feeling like I was talking to the audience, but really I was talking to you when I said, how are you? And that's good because the audience can't respond to me. True. Thumbs up everyone. If you're good. If they're all giving thumbs ups, they're clicking whatever thumbs up is on the podcast. That's how we know. We know you're yeah, doing click. well. <laughs> click follow. If you're doing well, that should be the new thing. We will, we'll pick a random thumbs up and we'll send you an email. That is your prize. So, it is almost the end of the summer. The market is still moving in directions that aren't the right one, thanks to the interest rates of the world. Moving in the opposite direction. <laughs> of where we'd want it to go, unless maybe you're a buyer with a briefcase full of cash, in which case you're probably loving life right now because prices are a bit lower and you don't need a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So to those of you out there, call us. And congratulations to you, to everybody else and your clients. This is, uh, it's another speed bump. It's something we've grown accustomed to over the course of forever. The market is never consistent. And with that come peaks and valleys and all sorts of different types of properties. One of those being a never ending rising price and limited supply version of rentals. Mm -hmm. And yes. so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you just went, yes, I was I was going to keep talking, but it's all you. Jump in. No, I was just going to say in our market, especially rentals are tend to be what people gravitate towards when the market slows down for buys and sells. And so we're seeing a lot more people active in that space. Obviously, the rental market is pretty crazy right now, given uh, the fact that people are opting not to purchase a home. So it depends on the on the area though. And I know we've got audience throughout North America. So it might not be something you typically focus on, but hopefully this this can help. This discussion can help maybe um open up some ideas for you. Oh, and I, I think, yeah, regardless of where you are, I really want to drill home that often we hear rentals from a from the industry's perspective, the people who are working it, you and I and everyone listening, that they get a bad rap. It's that they don't pay enough, the commissions are smaller and the work is just as hard or harder. There's a lot of nuance to it we've talked about before that make it a different beast. However, this week we really want to talk about uh, the opportunity that it presents and hmm. why doing them beyond just the commission check, which is obviously a nice thing to have, it, why doing them is, is a place that maybe is a useful focus. And if you're already on it and focused on it and feeling like your career is stuck in rentals, so to speak, let's talk about why that's really not the case. And maybe you're setting yourself up for success in a place where other people are just spinning their wheels. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you can get caught up in the amount of work, as you were saying, that it takes to help people with rentals, especially in our market where you could have a great tenant client who has perfect income and credit and all that kind of stuff. And they're still getting denied for, for rentals because landlords are, are being as picky as ever um, for good reason, but um, it's, it's not an easy process. So there's a lot of work that's involved. And a lot of times when you're working with more rental clients, it's more people versus buys and sells. So the number of transactions you're doing could be higher and it you can easily lose sight of the process you should be taking to make sure that you're nurturing them after the transaction has happened. And I think that's a big lost opportunity that many people are probably working through at the moment. The reality is these are people who are as warm to hot as a future lead 
as you're going to have versus the people you're trying to get in your database from a, hey, are you buying? Hey, are you selling perspective? When you've got someone who on either side, I mean, I, I think we're going to focus more on the tenant side now. That tends to be the the easier database build for people in a market like this right now. Um, these are people who a year from today, you know, provided you find them a place a year from today, a year from when they move in are either going to need a new one potentially, and it's a new lease client or one day they're stepping up. Right. And these are people who you've already established a relationship with. You have an understanding of where they're at in their real estate journey and what their profile is and all that. And like you said, you can nurture them in such a way that if their long-term goal is home ownership, what better way for you and for them to get there when the market allows itself and when their situation allows itself yeah. rather than spinning your wheels, trying to find people who are ready to buy today or ready to sell today. Well, and I think a lot of people default to, well, I need business now. I can't be bothered with trying to nurture somebody that's not going to buy for another several years. But I can tell you that from personal experience, I know we can both talk about this. The more people that you have in your database that are tenant clients that you nurture, it's going to turn into a lot of opportunity. I would say quite a few of my rental clients that I started working with when I started in this business 13 years ago are now turning into transactions that are, you know, tens of thousands of dollars and referrals for other individuals as well. So the opportunity is there. I think we have to think more long-term about this sort of a strategy. Um, but from a referral standpoint, absolutely. That's a more immediate return potentially for nurturing these individuals, whereas the repeat is still super important and super valuable. Um, but we just have to keep on uh, a certain way in order to make sure we we stay top of mind with these people. It should go without saying, but maybe people don't realize this follows the exact same life cycle of any client. Like this is the same database building, relationship building, excellent service that builds into repeat and referral that it would be with any other client or exactly. would be client it's that you're no dealing different. with. Yeah. Right. So when it comes to actually putting your feet on the pavement and getting it done, this isn't going to be a steep learning curve, except for the fact that rentals are a different beast from purchasing and selling, right? If you haven't been focusing on that. But like you said, this is where a lot of people rightfully get their starts in terms of starting to do business. It's where I started, like same as you, my biggest network of clients right now began with a rental easily. Like it's mm -hmm. not even close what number two might be. It was a rental and it was a couple and the sister of one of the tenants became sort of the first seed in a big tree of sisters and friends and all sorts of other people who have been buying and selling for years now. Um, and it all started with a $1,800 apartment lease, you know, yeah. seven, eight, nine, whatever it was years ago. And mm -hmm. so you can't take any for granted the same way you can't with any potential leads, but understand you're not just doing it for a, I need to pay the bills this month and this is all I can get perspective, okay. right? I mean, it's great. It still pays the bills. And we have, uh, you know, a couple of our most successful agents at our brokerage to this day are doing 40 to 50 leases in a year. Right. And yeah, yeah, that's paying the bills, but that's also 40 to 50 could be future clients and their networks that are coming yeah. out of that who have all received stellar customer service from the agent. Like, what mm -hmm. would you rather have drip some money in revenue wise as your building database and as you're building the possibility to grow this in the future Yeah, or drip out money? consistently to try to bring in leads that are so, so, and maybe, maybe not will work. Like, right. That's why it's so valuable. Yeah. And you've developed the trust. You've already got the trust there. And I think all of us can, can notice when that trust or that um, comfort level shifts with our clients, when they first start working with us, even if they've committed to us, there's sometimes 
moments where you wonder if you're really connecting with them, if it's making sense. And it takes people a while to get used to how you work and, and trust you to kind of tell you the things that they want to tell you, if even from a financial standpoint. So if you can start that you've already established that trust with that individual, it makes it so much easier to hop into a future transaction with them. And you don't have to go through that awkward period or the questioning period of, are they going to keep working with me? I feel like we're not making a connection here. So that's really good too. I don't want to minimize what leases are either. Like this is someone's place that they're like, yeah. this is their home in the same way yeah. as anything else. And I think again, as an industry, we minimize it as less important or as not requiring the same focus or work on our end because of the dollar outcome. I think mm. that's what drives that. Um, and in a lot of cases, because it's as difficult or more difficult to find a tenant, a good place to live because of things like um uh, discrimination issues and because of limited supply and, and all the things that go into that. But the other side of the coin to that is there's no better forum to really lock down your craft in dealing with different types of people in building systems in different approaches you take to marketing. Um, because I think some of the best ideas and some of the best things that I've seen come out of, of people's work has been from their lease side of the business more than it was from the one-off trying to get a buyer or a seller here and there. Yeah. And the value you can give these people, and we're going to get into a bit of tactics. I'd like to do that because I think there's a lot you can, we can talk about there, but the value you can give to these people that they actually appreciate and will consume is far higher than somebody who has already purchased a home several times or already has sold a home several times. They don't need the first time home buyer information or how to, how to, what a deposit is like all of these things that we continually want to give to people. It's the people that are currently renting that really need this information and really appreciate it. So there's so much opportunity to really come from a place of value with these individuals um, rather than racking your brain, trying to think, okay, how do I get through to like an investor who has done this a billion times and really doesn't see the value in, in what I do? Like, I mean, there's people that do that, but I think especially as if you're starting out or you're finding things are slowing down for you in this market, let's turn to this and see what kind of value and what kind of repeat and referral business you can really grow for yourself and database. Absolutely. It's, it's such an ecosystem that it kind of, it neighbors what we talk about all the time, but it's its own world of learning about real estate. And it aids you also when the time comes that you're working with would-be investors or landlords or people who are trying to establish how that world works because that's how they want to build their income and buy places and all that. It's yeah. such an important piece of your own knowledge that you need is to understand how leases work and all that as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You sort of touched on also that people appreciate this, I think also, and sadly, because of the fact that tenants don't get the same attention generally from agents that other people might. And I think it's an opportunity for our industry to, you know, the good ones of us out there, I think already do this. But when you approach this from a position of, I am going to ensure my value comes through 150% with every single individual, big or small, mm -hmm. whatever. It resonates to me on a much larger scale with people who already feel like they're being minimized by either landlords or the real estate working community that's out there. I think that's why mm -hmm. so many of them to turn to places like Craigslist and Reddit and Facebook Marketplace and all that because they don't feel they're going to be able to get someone who cares enough to help them out or they feel like they've been slighted. So when you do your job and go the extra mile for a tenant, this is, like you said, it's something that in the moment gets so much appreciation, but that pays off long-term with the relationship and repeat and referral quite a bit as well, because it shows how good you are and how much you care, mm -hmm. not just about the paycheck. Yeah, exactly. So shall we dive into a few tactics? tactics? 
tips, tricks, tactics. What's what's oh, an episode the of that? The tips three T's. Tips, tricks, and what? Tactics. Tactics, yeah. And penance. Which really mean all the same thing, but it really is. Yeah, <laughs> tips and tricks like could be the same thing. I like tactics because whenever I say tips, I feel the need to add in tricks as well. And they're not really tricks. They're not really tricks. They're tactics. Have we, have we ever really given a trick on here? I feel Actually, like you know what? Are deceiving. At, at least one of these tactics is kind of a trick if people haven't really done it before. I mean, okay. I can think of different things that we've talked about. I know there's there's one that's worked really well in terms of generating mm -hmm. tenant leads that our yeah. agents have used, and it's really been a slam. Yeah. Down. Well, why don't we start with that? Because that is where you start. And if you're sitting there saying, I need more business, mm -hmm. let's talk about how you can start working with some tenants. That's it. We should, we should have teased at the beginning of this. We're going to give you a can't miss lead gen idea towards the end of the episode. Then people would have been listening till now. But Stay for those tuned. of you who are still here, um, one tactic that has worked really well is the re-advertising of existing listings, rental listings, rental mm -hmm. listings that meet a, a predetermined market you're trying to go after. Yeah. Um, now, we can get into the step-up element of this later. I would suggest you start as low and small as is possible and comfortable for you because there are more people in that zone looking for that sort of thing. Now you're going to meet a much wider cross section of people. They're not necessarily all going to be qualified or the right type of, of contact for what you've put out there, but by sharing in whatever form it is, let's say Facebook marketplace, as an example, you share an existing rental listing, call it a $2,000 one bedroom condo for rent, you get permission to advertise from the person whose listing it is because it's not yours. You're finding it from an existing pool of listings. You find one that looks uh, appropriate and that looks like something that shows well and you advertise it and you see who's interested. And I guarantee you, you will get tons of response of would-be tenants asking for more information, asking to see it, so on and so forth. And now let's take it from there. What do you do next? Or what did I leave out in that initial piece? Well, I think, I mean, no, I don't think you left really anything out in terms of like how to approach it. I think we've learned personally and, and hearing from our agents as well about ways to make the process more efficient because sometimes you list a property or you advertise a listing that's like a gold mine of a lot of people reaching out to you. And it's a really a matter of filtering through those individuals. Cause if you're in your, if your market is like our market, you need to have all your paperwork in order. You need to have the credit report. You need to be a very strong tenant candidate for us as an agent to be able to properly support you and help you to find the right place. Because there are instances where that tenant could be better off going off to a private lease or um, going through a rental apartment site where the guidelines aren't as stringent. And I think when you're in that position, it's about, first of all, identifying who's going to be the, the right people to work with. And for those that you can't work with, it's not just, I don't say like, just swipe them off to the side, like give them some resources that you can allow them to help with their search um, and keep in touch with them still add them to your database. Um, you know, just because you can't help them now, doesn't mean you can't help them in the future. So that process, give them something of value. So like if you have like a PDF one pager, that's just like, Hey, you're better off. Like I, what's in the best interest of your search currently is for you to go and look at these sites, these areas. And I think you'll have better luck finding something. I unfortunately am not able to help you because of how strict the landlords I work with are. And, um, I, I just don't want to waste your time. And if you put it in the position that you don't want to waste their time versus you're wasting my time. Cause you're useless, um, is, is obviously the, the, the better approach, but I find sometimes people like either shy away from continuing a conversation with those people. They're still people at the end of the day, and they're still going to have real estate needs down the road, um, that you can help and give value to. 
And the other thing with that is, and I'm completely lost my train of thought. So I'm trying to think as I, as I talk, <laughs> I'll jump, in, I'll jump um, in on, on the same wavelength and then jump sure, in maybe if you remember, but, grab but my point, on, yeah. on, on that things of value perspective, prepare, and it really can be generic for everything you put out there. You don't need to have a fact sheet about every property, but have that standard, here's what you need document mm. or whatever. Yeah. So that it's again, systemized that if you invest a day now in building out a one pager or some doesn't have to be a whole guide, nothing like that, but you know, the tenant's guide to landing a place or whatever, that basically says, here's all the information I need to get the ball rolling and to, to answer the question you just asked of like, is this person a fit or not? If everybody that responds to you gets a, a message right away that says, thanks so much, here's all the stuff, here's all the information that is required for any rental. Are mm -hmm. you prepared with this? Can you send me some of this? You know, what questions do you have? Yada, yada, yada. It potentially starts a conversation, but it also saves you all that legwork of every time trying to establish what you can get from somebody. And it also makes it easier for you to establish whether or not they're a fit for this property. It might lead to other things. You might see that they've got a good profile, but they've got, I don't know, they're smokers, they have a dog, their income is such and such. It doesn't mean you can't say, you know what, this one might not be for you. So to your point, maybe it's you're better off private, maybe it just doesn't work with an agent, but maybe it's you put out something that's a $3,500, whatever. And from what you're seeing, maybe they can afford it, but they can't afford this particular one because of restrictions on it. But you know what? I can send you a, co a couple of other options maybe, or if you tell me more about your search, we can figure it out. You'll be able to knock off a bunch of check boxes by giving them something professional right out of the gate that shows them you care and shows them you're organized and it helps them get organized also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the other thing I was just gonna add to what I was saying was that I find either people just dismiss the person entirely and makes no further contact with them, or they try to start working with them, knowing that their profile is not ideal and go down the road of wasting everybody's time, um, only to find out after five failed offers that they're better off going that other route. So you're better off putting in place that boundary from the beginning and identifying, getting really good at identifying who are the people that I can actually help and who are the people that are better off going in different directions. Still maintain contact either way, but just don't waste your time. Like do have, have that system in place. And, and one of our agents has really perfected this. And over time, you learn how to determine yeah. that. Like you're right. Like with anything else, you're going to run into roadblocks or people who are just going to be a waste of your time, but they're not a waste mm -hmm. of your time because as long as you learn from why it wasted your time, it's not a waste. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the agent that we've got who does this still religiously has done a couple of things over time with it that has grown the business. In addition to turning at least a couple of them into purchasers, it has also been, number one, doing what you've said, which is establishing what they're looking for as an agent and what kind of that baseline profile needs to be to work with them. Mm -hmm. And over time as well, they've adjusted the types of properties they've put out there. So yeah. what started as basement apartments, maybe, or what started as you know, one bedrooms in so-so areas has graduated to one plus ones downtown to full floors of houses to now, you know, five, $6,000 home rentals that are geared towards a different audience altogether. But it's the same strategy. It's just been perfected. And now through weeding things out and even through some of her original cl clients, stepping up, not necessarily to buying, but needing more square footage. It's just built a growing system that's gone along the way. Um, and this also, I guess we didn't mention, but this doesn't need to be your entire seven day a week strategy either. Right. I know we talk about focus and, and this should be, if this is something you're focusing on, it should consume a pretty large part of where your time is spent. But this doesn't mean take your eye off the ball if you're currently doing 
something that yeah. is your existing strategy. If you're, if you're geo farming, if you're farming or whatever, an area, keep doing that because like we've always said, you can't stop a strategy because it's not working, but this is a great way to commit a few hours to really putting something out there and letting the machine run with this sort of lead as well. Hmm. Yeah. So that covers how to get the lead, but I think also we want to talk about how to nurture that lead and turn it into repeat and referral business. And to me, the best way to do that is through a drip campaign. Um, and if people don't know what a drip campaign is, it's essentially a series of contacts or emails that you can use over the course of a year to give people real value um, as they may think about their home search or just things they need to think about as they're renting a place in terms of responsibilities and rules. Because um, definitely in our market in Ontario, there's a lot of misunderstandings and misconceptions about the rules and what can and can't be done. Um, so that sort of education can really be valuable for people. So if you want to put something like that in place, I would really give that some thought, like think, do a brain dump of you know, 10 to 12 different topics that you think these sorts of individuals would find value from and build out some emails and put it in, into some automation. And hopefully you've got a CRM that you can, you know, have these people tagged. So you know exactly who you want to be reaching out to and who you need to be nurturing. Um, but that's the start of a really strong strategy to turn these people into really great repeat and referral business down the road. I think a pretty heavy um, portion of it being into straight resources is key. So if it's a 12 drip campaign, let's say like, and most leases are a year, mm -hmm. maybe eight, nine of them are actual resources of things that tenants or future homeowners will benefit from versus yeah. pitchy stuff or anything like that. Maybe, you know, email number nine, when somebody's coming into the back quarter of their year is something yeah. that speaks to people who are thinking about next steps after yeah. a rental, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also I prompt yourself, the drip is there so that you don't have to be thinking about it constantly, but prompt yourself to have those two, three reach outs over the course of the year with just a personal, how's it going? What's new? You know, are you thinking of renewing it? Do you need help with another one? Do you like all those sorts of things? Um, because yeah. all again, all the other database things we talk about and nurture and relationship building, it's no different, regardless of where somebody is in their life cycle as a client, whether they're buyer, seller, renter, landlord. It's still mm -hmm. about keeping contact. The drip does that for you though, on mass in a really good way that's structured. And so it's a great way to keep them going. Yeah. Yeah. The automation is so key. And as you, if, if, you know, rentals becomes a bigger part of your business initially or right now, then you don't have to worry about maintaining contact. If you've, you know, maybe added 25 people to your database and you're like, Oh crap, how am I going to figure this out? Like drip campaigns and, and monthly newsletters and whatever you have that can go out to a specific set of individuals at mass and automatic um, just puts you in a much more um, efficient place from, from your business perspective. Um, Cause then you can still focus on other things. So this is like a project we're talking about. I'm not saying tomorrow have a drip campaign going out. Like you really need to put some thought into this sort of a strategy. Do you have a system that will first of all, allow you to do this? Um, cause it's not like you can just have the emails and magically they start going out to people as you add them into your database. Like there's a lot that has to go into it. So I would say that if this is something you might want to work on, it might be something towards this last part of the year that you want to get put in place, um, to get going in, in January. But it's, it's like, I cannot stress how valuable this aspect of your business is is in terms of really taking care of those individuals because it, it's incredible what you can build from, from there. Um, so I, I would say, take this very seriously. And when you take it seriously, I think we, we talked about this this morning, 
do everything you can to plan it properly before you put mm -hmm. it into action. Understand yeah. the moving parts of a drip, understand what the content's going to be, how it's going to flow. Do all your systems talk to each other in a way that makes sense? You know, like, are you going to have to buy more than one tool or subscribe to different things to do it the way you want to do it? You may, uh, but uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's still a shortcoming of every industry. I think that, you know, not every system properly talks to each other. And when it comes to things like designing and putting out there and managing and all that, you want to be sure you know what you're doing. And this isn't a knock on you. I know you're you're dealing with it now. Like, but this is it's we we learn from the things we do. Like I'm I'm very cunningly learning from the things you're going through so that when I actually turn the key on this stuff, it's already gonna be figured out. But I Well, think, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. That, that, and that's just an overall thing. That's not just for drip campaigns for tenants. Like, oh, this is just general. from your system perspective. All your systems, yeah. you know, there's a lot of companies out there that deliberately want you to integrate all of their existing systems because they talk to each other in a great way, but you might yeah. not like all the things they do. So make sure, yeah. you know, we, we once had, when we started, we got a, a company called, what was it? Zoho? I think it was mm. right. Yeah. Nothing wrong with them. I mean, I know people, it was referred to us also. It's a company that basically has every system that exists like more yeah. systems than anyone would ever need. And they talk to it's each like other. It's like the Walmart of Yeah, it's, it's like the Costco. It's like the giant tiger <laughs> of like systems. Byway. It, it is. It, well, that's the thing. And, and it's a good deal, but you get what you pay for in that you're getting all the things, but all of them are like a six out of 10, right? Yeah. And when well, you want- yeah when you want certain things to work a certain way or look a certain way, you need to go outside of that system and then it doesn't talk to that system, right? So be aware of that when you're doing these things. That's just a little side, that's not a trick. That's a tip right there. The, tri the yeah. trick is not investing in something long-term without knowing what it is and that you're actually going to commit to it and use it. Yeah, exactly. Like I... <sighs> I don't know. I don't, like, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm going through a process now of, of identifying if there's certain systems that I should be putting into place in my business to better reflect the business I want to display out there to the world. Um, but when it comes to a CRM, especially I'll say that don't try to beat yourself up too much about which one is like the perfect option for you. If, if you're currently thinking of getting one, and I think anybody that starts in this business should get one from day one. That's something that I was never told, um, or never taught. So, you know, I feel like I'm always playing a bit of catch up, um, as, as I put these systems into place, but at least a CRM system is one where you can export your contacts and put them into somewhere else. If you find something that works better for you, because over time, you're going to figure out what you really want and what you really can't don't want. Um, and, and one thing recently I've learned as I exploring more drip campaigns for my own, uh, database is the, the email options that you're given with most CRMs, even the most robust ones, may not fit with the brand that you're trying to put out there. And some people are fine with just, you know, the generic, like, these are the facts, here you go, check it out kind of thing. Um, for myself, I'm more focused on style and I, and I want it to project a certain feeling. And um, I find that with a certain aspects of, of the CRM, it doesn't allow you to do that. So anyway, all that to say is, if you're starting from the beginning, um, in terms of systems, just kind of start with the basics and, and learn from what you like and, and move forward from there. Um, but from the email drip campaign perspective, um, it, it's good just to have an outline of what you you're looking to send out and, and just slowly identify the steps that you need to take to make sure you're covering your bases before jumping into anything. Cause everybody will tell you, like you ask 10 people, what, CRM or email provider system that they use, they're, you're going to get 10 different answers. And it's so confusing. And none of them are wrong, right? Like they're not yeah, wrong. Answers. Yeah. It really is what works for you and what matches what you're looking for. 
mm-hmm. and using it. Yeah. Yeah, so, exactly. So when it comes to tenants and rentals, looping it back, bring it back. This is in a time where people feel like there's no opportunity and that it's very difficult to do business. There is always business out there. There's always a ton of people looking for help. And this is, I think, a very low hanging fruit that's not easy to, you know, to complete or to sell to any more than anybody else. But it's there in a place where there are tens of thousands of realtors looking for business. It's amazing how small the percentage of them is who are actually looking to this probably largest pool of potential clients to go and get them, right? So rather than depending on a service sending you names and email addresses of lukewarm to cold to freezing leads that are going to go nowhere, that are going to be spinning your wheels, why not go to people who are actually in the market right now and need your help? Because Mm -hmm. it's going to pay off huge, hopefully now, but definitely in the future. And the name of the game is database and relationships. And there's no better way to start it than through this large pool of people who need your help. So a challenge for everybody out there. What is it? Go find a listing in whatever area you're focused on and ask the agent's permission to advertise and put it up on your social media channels, Facebook marketplace, Kijiji, wherever, and see how it goes. See what kind of response you get and start having conversations with people. That's all we really need to do in a day is have a conversation. Even if the conversation you have doesn't turn into an actual tenant client, it's somebody you could put in your database. And that's what we're we're, we're needing to do at this stage is just the building um, and the conversation. St- 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 it's always about that. But you know, especially now, where we're feeling like things might be a bit bit slower. If you're still actively having those conversations, you never know where the things might lead. Do it. Hey, well, folks, get out there. That's your task. That's your homework. Go get lots of clients. Go own this rental market. How it goes. All right. Until next week, all stay fit and have fun. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. Level, 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 level